Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I've decided I'm going to break things up into some chapters. That way I can share with you some of the things we found and some of the things people missed in this case. And uh, that way I can share with you some of that stuff and then continue on with the investigation with other chapters that we're working on. But I wanted to share with you some of this stuff today because a lot of people really underestimate just how much work we've done and just how much investigating we've done and how much we really have to share with you all. The people I'm working with now have done an incredible job at documenting absolutely everything. And when you see what we show you today, you'll understand just how far we have gone to document absolutely everything. We have measured everything. We have investigated the crime scene. In fact, we've actually investigated what we consider three separate possible crime scenes, and we will label them crime scene A, B, and C, and you will see that stuff today. And most importantly, I'm going to show you just how impossible it was for Kylie Rodney to drive into that lake by accident, whether she was drunk or sober. It's just not possible, and I'm going to show you why. I'm also going to show you some other things that people missed in this case that are extremely important, and your jaw may hit the floor when you finally see what I have to show you today. So, without further ado, we're going to get into it here. First thing I want to show you folks is the measurements, the layout, and the journey the vehicle supposedly took, if we are to believe the story we were told. So let's start there. Let's take a look at some of these areas that you've never seen. And I'm going to show you some video footage here that you've never seen before. All of this stuff has been collected professionally, and we have been documenting everything and compiling everything and we have saved it all up we have gigabytes of video and photos that you have never seen before N i promise you nobody has investigated these areas and these crime scenes more than us i don't even think law enforcement did as much work as we did so let's take a look at some of these photos and videos and let me show you the area and why Several things in the story they have told us is absolutely impossible. First of all, let's take a look at some of the measurements. Here you're going to see a satellite map. And on here we have some measurements for you. So you can finally see where everything is according to the distance between the locations. Okay, so I'm going to start you out with this satellite photo here. This is where we're going to show you the three possible crime scenes that we've looked at. Obviously, you know of two of them, and we have questions about the third one. Um, so we're going to look at that, and we've got photos and video of all of them. So first of all, we're going to mark on this map Crime Scene A. Now, Crime Scene A is where the party supposedly took place. And it's what they call the sanctuary. Okay, that's not in the Prosser family campground. It's right next to it. Okay. Next we have crime scene B, which is the obvious one because that's where the car was found in the lake. And we know it's a crime scene because that's where she ended up in her car. So we also have crime scene C, which is over at Boca Lake here. And that is where the Boca Lake campground is, where she supposedly stayed that night, according to Nick's story from Roadside Assistance. So we have the third location 
uh, indicated there on the map for you. So those are the three scenes. However, those aren't the only scenes that we feel are involved in the case. Those are just the three crime scenes, we'll call them for now. And now you know where they are. We have the sanctuary, crime scene A. We have the beach where the water, uh, where the car went in the water, which is crime scene B. And then we have the Boca Lake campground where Nick met up with Kylie on Saturday, August 6th, around 11 a.m. to service her vehicle and where she supposedly stayed for the night. So now that you can see those, let's go back to this image here where we have marked three separate photographs. So we can talk about these three areas individually and then I can show you the photos that correspond with these areas. And this is gonna help you get a better idea of what this place looks like and kind of bring you there even though you've never been there. We have enough photos and videos to show you these areas in high detail. So if I can show you on the map here where the photos are taken and then show you the photos, you'll be able to have a reference and be able to correspond the images you're seeing with the locations. And just like I've been able to do over time, you're gonna find with what we can show you here that it's gonna feel like you've already been there. So I hope I can do that for you and give you a better image of what this place really looks like and the terrain and the locations of these places because it's all extremely important and we have to go over all of it. And we have done a lot of investigating, a lot of measuring, and a lot of video and photo taking so we could show it to you all today. Okay, so this is the location where the highway turns off toward Prosser Family Campground and you can also head down to the sanctuary area there. So that's what you're looking at right now and we'll look at the map again here now and you can see photo number one. Alright and that's what you're looking at. Let's go back to the image here. So that's what you're looking at. That's where the beginning of the road is. Okay, so now you get a feel for what that looks like. So now let's go back and look at our map again for a sec, and we're going to look at photo number two. Now that's where the sanctuary is. I'm going to show you a couple shots of this. Here you can see where the sanctuary uh, kind of branches off from the road. The roads are almost like paths down here but you could call it a road. It's wide enough to get a car down. Now, as you can see, there's not a lot of room for cars to park there. And if you're driving all the way in where the trees are, you have to have something that's not low to the ground. Any of those low to the ground type vehicles are not gonna get back there. So first of all, there's no place for cars for a 300 person party. There just isn't room there for it and uh, we have other evidence about the party situation that we'll talk about later but for now you can see that the area just isn't really quite as big as you would think and now I'm going to show you a video clip here this is the sanctuary area this next clip is between 17 and 4 on the Prosser family campground side looking down you can see straight over to the point where Kylie's car was found in the lake. So if there was a 300 person party up here, almost everybody would have seen a car drive straight into the lake and seen the lights down there. Now, we've looked into things about the party being maybe spread out between the campground and the sanctuary, and that does not seem to be the case either. And we'll cover more of that later. But for now, I just wanted to show you these areas so you can get a better feel for them. Now of course we all know what the beach area looks like but only from the news perspective so we went ahead and got a lot more footage and photos of the area so let's take a look at the beach area now and these photos were taken when the water was lower than where the car was sitting so we actually have a photo here 
of where the car was actually sitting in the mud and I doubt you've ever seen this before because we're the only ones that took these photos and videos and compiled all this stuff for a couple of months now and uh, we've taken measurements of everything from where the car was sitting to the water's edge where the water was at the time we've measured from the beach and waterline area to the first curve which I'm going to show you in a second here um, but I wanted you to get a better feel for what it looks like coming off of the highway and then heading down to the sanctuary. The road is very much like a path. Then when you get to the sanctuary area, you can turn in there. But again, it's not suitable for a lot of cars to be parking. And you certainly can't go all the way in there. You have to walk halfway. So this area they like to call the sanctuary is a kind of a hangout, I guess. And you could hang out there, but not with 300 people and more than 100-something cars to accommodate those people. So let's go back to the satellite image with the numbers on it. And then I'm going to show you some more images and videos that go along with these numbers. So hopefully you can start to feel like you've been there. You get a very good feel for the terrain and these areas. And in your mind, you'll start to be able to piece together the actual locations and what they look like, like I've been able to do over the past few months. I've had a much better view of this area for somebody that's never been there than anybody else on the internet that's never been there because my team has done such a great job at sending me these photos and videos. And I've had people doing things that you wouldn't even believe. So I'm showing you some of this stuff today because there's a lot of people out there that have been skeptical and think I'm not doing anything, but they don't understand that we have put thousands of hours into this already between myself and my team. I have spent more than double the donations we got. I put in $500 myself to start the donation pot and I've spent over two thousand dollars of my own money so far we've done well over 50 background checks professional background checks on people in this case if you can think of somebody that's been in this case we've probably done a background check on them we've checked everybody almost everybody came up totally clean there's only a couple people that have some criminal charges that aren't even really anything to be too concerned about so We've done a lot of background checks, a lot, and most of them have come up empty. And we had to, because we have to look at everything, and I promised you all that I was going to document everything, and I hope now you are starting to see that. So, let's carry on here and look at these locations and the numbers, and I'm going to help you get a better picture of what this place actually looks like and then the other locations we talked about as well. So I hope now you're starting to see some photos and videos that prove to you that we've been at this for months, nonstop, no sleep, spending our own time and money, and we're working hard to get to the truth. And I am going to do my best to deliver it to you all in video format when the time is right for those things to be shown we're working on a lot of much deeper stuff right now and we have to keep trucking ahead but at the same time i know you guys are just dying to see some stuff so that's why i decided to break it into chapters so now that you understand how much work we've put into this i'm showing you chapter one here because i feel like it's time for everybody to see this stuff and start raising these questions so i hope now with a better view of the locations and the areas, you'll be able to understand what I'm going to show you in this video, which I would call the impossible journey for her vehicle to have traveled. So first, let's get a better feel for these locations. So let's look at the map here again, and you can see we've got some numbers on here. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the photos that go with these numbers. So you already saw photo number one, two, and three on the more basic map there. And now this map shows a few more areas 
that we have photos for as well. So let's go ahead and go through these one at a time. So we'll start out with photo number one here. I showed you already. That is where it leaves the highway. And uh, you go through the gate there to get to the road that leads to Prosser Family Campground. So we'll go back to the map here. You can see where that image is, number one up there. And then I'll show you image number two, which is just a little bit further past there where the uh, road starts. So let's look at that photo right now. This is photo number two. And you can see what it looks like here. And then we'll go back to the map here again, and you can see where it's located. So that's where the entrance is to the um, campground and to the sanctuary. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at photo number three. Now, I already showed you photo number three, but uh, on the more simplified map, we called it photo number two. We're going to go back to that simplified map with just the three photos later in this video. But for now, I wanted to show you all the areas, so we're looking at the full map with all the numbers. So this photo is number three and is the entrance of the sanctuary. As you can see here, um, that's where the cars would turn in to go toward the sanctuary. And they would kind of have to park all in this area here if they were indeed parking to have a party at the sanctuary. Or their cars would have to be parked over at the Prosser family campground side and they would have to walk over here. So let's look back at the map here and zoom in a little bit. And you can see number three was where the photo is taken. And backwards behind the photographer is where the path is that I just showed you. And it goes back to Prosser Family Campground. It's only a path though, you can't drive a car down it. Okay, so now we're going to zoom in on photo number four. Now this is on the Prosser campground side. This is the photo here facing the lake. Now this is the only other road that gets down to that area of the beach where Kylie's car was found. And I want you to uh, take note of this photo because we're going to come back to this one. This is an important photo. Okay, so next up we have photo number five. You can see it there on the map. And this is from the photographer's perspective. And you can see the roads a little bit in the dirt there. Okay, so this is the image that goes with that. Okay, so you can see the road there along the trees. And then you can see that there's a couple little paths coming down off the hill into the dirt there. Pointed out with an arrow there. And now we'll just go back to the map and I'll show you where those are. Okay, so here is the road. And now here are those three little paths coming off the road that go down into the dirt. Okay, so you get a better idea of where that is. Let's go back to the image just one more time so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so let's go back to the map here and we're going to take a look at Photo number six, facing toward the lake from that location. And now we're going to take a look at photo number seven down here at the beach. And here is the image that goes with that location. So the number is where the uh, photographer is standing while taking the shot. Next up, we're going to go to photo number nine. I'm going to skip photo number eight because it's an important piece of evidence that I'd like to show you a bit later in this video. So we're going to jump ahead to number nine first and just show you this location. Here's the image that goes with photo location number nine. And you can see what it looks like from this perspective. And you can see the beginning of the road right there on the right. Now this particular image is shot facing away from the water. So the actual number on the map is what you're looking at 
rather than the photographer's position in this case. Okay, so next up we have photo number 10, a spot a little more familiar to you all, down at the beach where the car was found. And I had to blur out one of our investigators' vehicles there. So that's what you're seeing, the blur spot. Now I'm going to skip another photo here. Photo number 11 is a huge piece of evidence. So we're going to jump ahead to photo number 12, just so you can see the layout. And this is the image that goes with photo number 12. We're just going to skip right along here to some of the ones, just so you can see what they look like, because they're not as important, but I still want you to understand what they look like. So you have a really good idea of this whole area. We did all this research just for you guys, so you could see all this stuff. Even the places that aren't really connected to the case are, or that important uh, in regards to investigating the case itself, but you still get a better idea of the area by seeing all of these places. So we had all of it photographed and video shot for you. So I'm trying to help you get a better feel for the locations and what the place is like. So you can feel like you've been there without being there. Next up, we have a really important photograph for you. Location 13, out there in the water. This was taken after the water was lower than where the car was, looking back up the hill. This is exactly the spot where Kylie's car was sitting on its roof. That's where our photographer is standing. Not right on the marks she was trying to photograph, but right next to them. So this is looking straight up the hill from where the car was sitting on its roof. I hope some of you can appreciate how much time and effort we've put into this because we're showing you photos that you've never seen, videos you've never seen, perspectives you've never seen, and some of it is um, pretty amazing footage that we have and photos that we have, as you can see here. I've already shown you a lot of photos today already that you've never seen before. so. You've seen it here first, folks, and I can assure you we have a lot more to show you. But this photo really sends it home. Looking back up the hill, this is where the car was sitting. Upside down. When the water was 10 to 12 feet deep. Next up we have photograph location number 14. And this is taken facing away from the lake, shooting back toward the land. And this is what it looks like here. So you have a better idea of what it looks like if you were standing there. Next, we have location 15, deep into the sanctuary area there. And that would be considered crime scene A in our previous image that I showed you. Now, this is an important location because not only is it considered a possible crime scene, but it's a location that has an important photo that you might have seen floating around on the internet when the case first broke. So, first of all, here's the image taken from one angle of location 15. But, let's take a look at another photo because I'm going to show you something here that no one else has shown you. I promise. I'm going to show you a lot of things that nobody's shown you, but I had to break it up into chapters because, you know, people want to see stuff, and I just want you all to still have faith in what we're doing here. So, let's take a look at this photo. I'm sure you all remember this photo. This is the photo we were told was on the night of August 5th, the party. Now, I counted 25 people in this photo. Maybe I missed one, but I counted three times, so I think I'm right. But that does not sound like 300 people, and this seems like more of an appropriate size group 
to fit in the sanctuary area to have such a party. But what no one's shown you before is exactly where this photo was taken. So we did a lot of homework to find the exact location. We knew it was over near the sanctuary somewhere. And so after some investigating and some image moving around to get it the right size, because, you know, depending on how far away you are, the perspective changes just a little bit. So let's take a look at this image. This is the image we believe is the daytime photo of the same location uh, taken two months later. This is taken in October. I believe it was taken October 1st to be exact. So let's do a little overlay here. And you can see that if I get the image just right here, the right size, you can see that the trees look just the same as the two trees in the, or three trees, I guess you can see, in the party photo. And also, you'll notice that the foliage on the tree on the right there matches up very close. In fact, I would say it is exactly the same place just a couple months later. So, you know, um, maybe a branch or two is in slightly different position. Also, in the party photo, it's very dark out there at night. And the flash from the camera only lit up the trees that it happened to hit. So there are probably more trees further back and off to the sides that you can't see in the party photo. But if you look at the trees and where I've got them lined up, I think you'll agree that we finally found the exact location of the so-called party photo. And believe me, we've looked everywhere. This is it. So take a look, folks. It's in the sanctuary, location 15, and I would say that's a match. This photo is significant for a couple of reasons. Not only do we finally know where the party photo was taken, but a lot of people on the internet thought the water was behind them there and that some of the kids might have been looking back at something like maybe Kylie's car going in the lake. But now you know that is just not the case because we did a lot of research and got you a lot of photos and mapped it all out for you. And you can clearly see that it's the opposite direction and there's nothing back there but trees. So there was definitely no water back there when that photo was taken and that's not what they were looking at. So that's one thing we've eliminated. And again, you've never seen this before. You're only seeing it today for the first time on my channel because I promised you guys we would show you all this stuff. We have a lot more to show you too, but one thing at a time. Next up, we have location number 16, which is also part of the sanctuary, a little bit closer to the water than 15. And here is a nice photograph of that spot. I hope you're enjoying all these nice photos. Um, like I said, my team's worked really hard to get all this stuff, number everything, catalog everything, help me organize it, and make it into video for you all. Next, we have location number 17, which is the Prosser Family Campground. Now, I already gave you a glimpse of this photo, but I want to show it to you again right now so you have the perspective. You know where this photo is located on the map. Here is another video clip of the area, and here you can see some of the campgrounds and fire pits and the picnic tables so this is the area you see as area 17 on the map and this is out looking over the lake this is looking back toward the area you can see they've removed a couple trees there this is really close to the edge and you can see the point in the background there that's where Kylie's car was found so this area is really close to there 
and you can actually see it. In fact, this video clip I showed you earlier is that exact spot. So as we get over to the edge here, that is the point uh, where Kylie's car went into the lake. You can see there's a car up at the top there, a truck. That probably would have been about where the tow truck was sitting at the time when it towed Kylie's car out of the lake. And here's another photo of the area just behind the truck overlooking the lake. So now that you have a better idea of what the terrain looks like and what these areas actually look like, and you can actually picture them in your mind and see them here on our map that we've carefully put together for you so you can actually get a perspective of where these places are. Now remember, I skipped photo number 8 and photo number 11, and I think those two images are really important. In fact, there's one other image too, the one I said to remember that we're going to go back to. So we have three images that I want to show you that make up what I call the impossible journey for her car to have taken. And when I show them to you and explain to you the journey the car was supposed to take to get there, you're going to understand that it just really isn't not possible to be done by accident, whether you're drunk or sober, whether Kylie was intoxicated or not. There's no way she did this by accident and... The idea that she knew this place like the back of her hand and lived here all her life just adds to the belief that I have and everybody else that's looked at this stuff has that there's just no way she drove into that lake by accident. In fact, we've talked to locals that go down to these areas all the time. I've talked to locals. Some of my team has talked to the locals while they were there. And they all agree that she did not take this route that they say she did, not by accident. But obviously, she did take the route because that's where the car ended up. But I'm going to show you right now just how impossible it is that she drove down there by accident all by herself and crashed into the lake and drowned. Okay, now I'm going to show you an animation I created. You can see Kylie's car there, or representation of it coming down the road from the gate. This is what supposedly happened Friday night. Now, obviously her car's a little big, but you get the point. So it pulled into the sanctuary, and there they had their party. So we're supposed to believe Kylie and her friends were partying there. And then we're supposed to believe she backed out and turned around and drove out here. And instead of making a left here, she suddenly made a right. And then she came to this corner. Now this is a very important corner. And this is photo number 11 on the big map that I showed you. And in our smaller map here for the impossible journey we'll call it photo number three right where the x is now we're supposed to believe that kylie just suddenly made a right turn out of the sanctuary there instead of left knowing that's the only way back to the highway there to the gate uh, she's been here all her life she knew this place like the back of her hand i really can't see her making that mistake even if she had a drink or two but let's say she did and she made it to this point where you see the car now i'm going to show you the photo of that corner and it will prove to you that she did not take that corner at a high rate of speed or even a moderate rate of speed she would have had to slow down to about one mile per hour and crawl over it let's take a look 
This image is some of the most important evidence you're going to see in this case. You can see there's a double hump on this corner that is sufficient to get air if you were taking it with a dirt bike or an ATV or even a car. If you were to take this corner at a moderate rate of speed or a high rate of speed, the car would roll. The car would get airborne. The car would fly off to the right or the car would bottom out. The fact that it's a Honda CRV all wheel drive is the only reason it could get down there at all. Most people that go down that route are driving a Jeep, off road vehicle, an ATV, or a dirt bike. A Honda CRV can make it over that carefully, very carefully. There is absolutely zero chance that she took this left hand corner by mistake. There is zero chance she did it at a moderate or high rate of speed enough to continue on another half mile and crash into the lake. There's no way she went over that without noticing. She would have definitely known she was taking the wrong route, especially since she knew this place like the back of her hand. Look at those ramps in the left hand corner that she's supposed to take down to the beach, down to the water. There is zero chance she did that. The car would have rolled, caught air, at least ruined the front bumper and smashed into the ground as it came down. The only way that Honda CRV got over those humps over that left-hand sharp corner is by taking them extremely carefully, taking it slowly, and most definitely doing it on purpose. Okay, so let's look at my animation here again. So the car is facing that left-hand corner that I just showed you that is not something you could do by accident. I mean, you can get over it, sure, but you would definitely notice I mean, Kylie had to have noticed. There's no way she did that by accident. I think everybody watching this video right now would agree with me. And so does my team. Everybody that's looked at this agrees. There's no way she made that left-hand corner. In fact, we asked some locals down there that were with a, uh, running around with a Jeep. And uh, one of our investigators asked, Do you think Kylie took that route down there, as we've been told? And they said, no way. No way. I mean, she could have got over it with her Honda CRV carefully and definitely done on purpose. But the idea that she took that left hand corner drunk by mistake, traveling at a rate of speed high enough to accidentally continue further down the path into the lake and crash, no chance. Let's pretend, though, that somehow she managed to make that right corner out of the sanctuary instead of a left. Let's say she was that drunk. We know she wasn't, but let's pretend. So she made the right corner, headed down the road to photo number three there, uh, which is photo number 11 on the big map. And that is the ridiculous corner that I just showed you with the double hump dirt bike jump in the middle of it. So, I mean, she could get over it carefully. Most cars like a uh, regular, like say a BMW or something, maybe a really low to the ground type Honda, um, you know, like a Honda Accord or something like that is not going to get over that at all. Only a vehicle that's like a Jeep or an off-road vehicle can get over it easily. And a, an SUV like a all-wheel drive Honda CRV could definitely get over it. But you would have to be cautious. You couldn't take that left corner at a high rate of speed. There's no chance. You would do damage. You would flip it. You would catch air. 
something bad would happen. There's no way she did that. She would have had to have slowed down to like one or two miles per hour and crawled over it and then sped back up and continued down the road. So that would mean she took this corner very cautiously and then sped up again. Then she would have had to continue on down over the beach area straight into the water fast enough to get out there. So we're supposed to believe she just did this and drove straight into the lake just like this. I don't buy it. Especially now that I've seen the terrain. And now that you've seen it, I think you'll agree. Okay, so let's go back to the big map for a second here. And you can see the sanctuaries, mark number three, where she took the right-hand turn instead of a left for some reason. Then you can see number 11, which is uh, the same as number three on my simplified map for the impossible journey. But you can see number 11 there is where the crazy turn is with that double hump jump. That can only be done slowly, cautiously, carefully, and definitely done on purpose. So to show you some distances here, um, first I'm going to show you the distance from number 11 to where the car ended up, number 13. You can see that here on the map. And you can also see how far it is from that crazy corner, number 11, back to the sanctuary corner. And from the sanctuary corner into the sanctuary. This one shows you the distance from the gate down to the water edge, where the water's edge would have been at the time her car went in the lake. And then it shows the full distance all the way back to the Prosser campground. So to make it simple, where she turned right out of the sanctuary instead of turning left, from that point to the water is about half a mile. Now you might be thinking the same thing I thought. What about alternative routes? Well, there's only a couple. Remember I told you to keep in mind that photo I, I mentioned before, the, the one I said, remember that photo, we're going to come back to it. Well, that's the one where the photographer was standing at position number four there and taking a photo of the road that goes along the tree line there or the brush area. Um, and... Let's take a look at that photo again. Now let's zoom in and take a look here. Once again, we encounter some humps and jumps, double bumps. Not something you could drive over at a high rate of speed, intoxicated, without catching air. There's definitely no way you could go over them without noticing, that's for sure. So the idea that she drove this way from the Prosser family campground side down to that area is also very, very unlikely that she would do that by accident without noticing, considering the fact that she would have to pretty much be you know, Daisy Duke from the Dukes of Hazard, and flying over it with a Jeep and catching some air because that's the only way you could do it if you were drunk and intoxicated and going fast enough to, to cause an accident when you got to the lake. The only way you could get over them is drive carefully and slowly, which would mean if she did do it, she would have to slow down and be careful, and she knew where she was going by then, wouldn't she? Because she knew this place like the back of her hand. So she didn't go this way either. Let's go back to the map. Now you might remember I skipped over photo number eight 
Photo number eight is the road that goes along the lake, along the front of the lake here, which is the only other way you could get to where the car was found. So this is the only other option, the only third option that's it. And there's two little roads you could take to get onto it down at the end here. Let's say she didn't make that left corner around the, you know, double hump jump. That's a very sharp left corner and would have rolled her vehicle or at least caught air. Um, but let's say she went past that and, and, and stayed right and made it down to this end. She would have turned a very sharp left. So she, again, she would have known where she was by this point. And then she would have had to travel along the beach or the shoreline on that road. And here's a photo of that. This is photo number eight that I skipped over before. Now you can see why. Yet again, we're encountering these jumps and humps and bumps, things that average cars can't even get over without bottoming out for sure. And a Honda CRV all wheel drive can get over, but you're not going to do it at a high rate of speed. You're certainly not going to do it by accident. You definitely wouldn't be able to do it without noticing. And she knew this place like the back of her hand. According to the autopsy, even, there's not enough alcohol there to even barely accommodate for decomposition. And let's say she had a beer or two. I really don't think she could make that huge mistake turning right out of the sanctuary and then turning left over the Dukes of Hazard jumps, going very slowly, and then speeding back up and crashing into the lake. I just don't think so. And coming down this other way is just not an option either, because, again, she would know where she was going by then. And there's more jumps and humps to go over that you would have to go extremely slow and careful and definitely be doing it on purpose. So I think it's pretty clear to all of us now and hopefully to you too, now that you've seen my video, that whoever drove that Honda CRV down to the water couldn't possibly have done it by mistake. There's just no way they couldn't have known where they were going especially Kylie. Okay, so now we're gonna head over to scene C, over by Boca Lake. This is the Boca Rest Campground. Now this is where Nick from Roadside Assistance said he serviced Kylie's car. Now, I have a lot of photos and videos of this area, and we're doing more investigation into this area, and I'll tell you why. Um, we have heard from the locals that Kylie and some friends were staying at campsite number nine at the Boca Rest campground. And, of course, that ties in with Nick's story as well. But I want to show you the area and give you a little better feel for it. Because again, this is something you've never seen anywhere else but on my channel. Because we have been compiling this stuff for months just to show it to you today. We have a lot more to show you as well. But this is what I'm going to show you in Chapter 1. And we're going to go over some of the video and images and the layout a little bit. So you can get a feel for the location. Also, I want to point out a couple things that have seemed to have changed a little bit since the map we looked at in Nick's interview. Um, so we'll compare those and, and you'll see what I mean with the differences and then we'll go from there. Okay, so this is the Boca Rest Campground satellite image with the campgrounds 
the lots marked and this is from the government website so this is what they tell you but it's not accurate and we've investigated and found that lot number nine where they supposedly stayed for the night Kylie and her friends according to a few locals we spoke to is not where it shows now you can see it looks like they're all in a nice row along the water one through ten but when you get to number nine it's just not there there is no site number nine it goes one two three four five six seven eight ten and I'm gonna show you that video right now to prove it to you okay so counting backwards we have ten then lot eight so you can see there was no nine between ten and eight it's been moved and is no longer there then it goes seven and then we have six a little further down we have five and four and three lot number two and campsite number one so as you can see they are not all in a row like they say on the government site at all they've been moved so going back to our satellite image here with the campground sites there is no campground number nine not in that location there is a number nine though it's over where you see number 23 that's right 23 has been replaced and campground nine is now where 23 shows on the government site it's a bigger lot it does not have a sign it only has a picnic table with the number on it and it would kind of make sense that they wanted to party at this one because it's a little further back it's bigger and obviously it's separate from the other lots a little bit so uh, maybe better for noise a little bit better for staying up late and drinking and playing music maybe I don't know but it makes sense that they would stay at lot number nine now we don't know why lot number nine is where 23 is and there is no longer a number 23 so that's a little bit of a mystery that we're still looking into we still have a lot of investigating to do in regards to the Boca Rest campground and the whole story surrounding that but let's think about this for a second if the insurance claim is definitely for the 6th for the car August 6th could it be that law enforcement and Nick are both telling the truth what if the car did go in the lake but not until Saturday night before midnight if the black box showed that then of course the insurance claim would be valid for the six but Nick could also have seen her that day if the car didn't go in the lake Friday night 1233 a.m. going on to Saturday morning instead went in the lake that night after something tragic happened to her now that's something we are thinking about and looking into and there are still many possibilities and I don't want to give away too much about what we're working on right now we do have enough material and Intel and evidence to show you for chapter 2 which I'm working on right now however recently there has been a lot of things going on YouTube a lot of channels that are just disgusting and vile and are attacking me personally and not doing anything on the case themselves they're more interested in attacking me personally because they're lowlifes that have nothing to offer you they certainly wouldn't put together a video like this for you that took well over a hundred hours of compiling video and photos and adding effects and arrows and explaining things and narrations I've put in so much time into this video I hope you appreciate it my team has put in so much time into this investigation and collecting all this data and Intel and evidence for you all I hope you 
can finally appreciate it all because we've been holding back so we could do these type of presentations for you just like I promised. However, I have enough material and I'm halfway through finishing chapter two and we're investigating stuff that we're hoping to put in chapter three. However, I've spent over $2,000 of my own money and we've spent more than double the donations we got. My team has also put in money of their own to do things when we didn't have the funds to do it. And a lot of people have lost faith in what we're doing just because we're holding back evidence and because of all these idiots on YouTube that are more interested in slamming me and making me look bad with ridiculous things that don't even make sense. Instead of actually focusing on this case and doing what I'm doing and what I promised you I would do is actually investigate and try to find out what happened and document everything just like I promised. So now after this video, I hope you can see how hard we have been working night and day for months. I am going to continue looking at this case. However, I don't feel that there's enough public support behind me anymore to do chapter number two. So if you want to see chapter number two and some of the mysteries that we've unraveled, then I would invite you to stop watching those other channels that are disgusting and vile and all about attacking me. You see, they're shills. They are sent here to stop me and slow me down. Most of them are so gullible and stupid that they just follow along with their friends and they're not getting paid to do anything. They're just doing things to throw hate toward me because they are filled with the darkness and they will do stuff like that for free because it makes them feel like a better person inside. They say, ha ha, I found out Jeff could get this information for free. He's a liar and everything's a scandal. How stupid does that really sound? I mean, I'm not allowed to use multiple sources to get data. I don't understand why people are mad at me for trying to get the truth and using whatever resources I need to get you there. So I hope you can appreciate it now after you've seen this video and maybe stop watching idiots like, you know, the cowboy that is a fake cop and all these other nasty people on YouTube that make videos trying to debunk me when they're talking about stupid stuff that has no relevance whatsoever in me investigating this case and providing you with the best video and the best breakdown of what's going on in this case and showing you just how much work we've really done behind the scenes that everybody thinks we didn't do. All the naysayers think we didn't do. All those awful, nasty, disgusting people on YouTube that are attacking me have nothing to show you. They have no clue what's going on in the case they have nothing to offer except hate and disgusting videos about me and my team. Now that you've seen what me and my team are doing and what we're capable of, maybe the public interest will come back my way. If I see that, I will continue on. So if you'd like to see chapter two, then, you know, maybe stick up for me and my team and stop listening to the garbage on YouTube. And if you want the truth about this case, you know, subscribe to my channel here. You've got an opportunity to subscribe for free. You can become a member as well if you'd like, and then you get to watch the important videos early. I'm releasing this one for Christmas. And, you know, if I do chapter two, if I see some public support coming back, then I will release that in the early new year here and show you a lot more interesting things that you have never seen and connect some dots for you that you've never connected before. So if you'd like to see that, we would like to have some support behind us again. And uh, if you can see the type of work we're doing here, then you know we have spent a lot of money. We've done background checks. I've got files and stuff I've had to purchase. Um, we had a couple different private investigators. So 
It all costs money. A lot of people have listened to the nonsense on YouTube from the idiots talking about stuff on my crowdfunding page saying that there's malicious software or some tracking. It's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. Does anybody think that the domain company would look at my data and turn my domain back on after all the fake complaints and hand over all the fake complaints to law enforcement and turn my crowdfunding page back on if there was something malicious about it? It's ridiculous. They say this garbage so that people won't donate anymore. And they're just trying to hurt our operation. So if you want to support our operation, stop listening to those people. There is nothing malicious on our crowdfunding page, or it wouldn't be there. Okay, that's pretty obvious. Plus, everybody knows you can see web stats. Just because I can see where somebody was in an area when they clicked on my website, that's not malicious software. That's just Google Analytics. Everybody has that on their website. And these idiots out there are trying to convince people that I'm somehow like hacking people and it's just a bunch of crap. I'm the only one that's been hacked and attacked and abused and slandered, defamed on YouTube. So now I have two case files open with law enforcement and now they're being watched by law enforcement. So the joke's on them. I haven't stopped doing what I'm doing and I'm not going to stop doing what I do as long as the public support is there. So if you appreciated this video and you want to help us complete chapter two and chapter three that we're working on now, then you can go ahead and donate at screwgofundme.org. And if you don't want to go to the crowdfunding page, there's also a direct link. You can go donate and skip right over our page even though I promise you there's nothing wrong with our page or it wouldn't be there. So these idiots that are calling me a scammer and saying I'm stealing data and blah, 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 are just vile creatures that want me to stop doing what I'm doing. And it's because they are friends with people that are getting paid to stop me from doing what I'm doing. And I told everybody that they would come do that when I got too close. And that seems to be what's happening. So I'm not afraid to keep showing you what I found because that's what you all asked me to do. But I do need to see some public support and I do need to see a reason for me to continue working on this night and day with my team and spending our own time and money and putting so much effort into these animations and videos and stuff for you all. If you want me to keep doing it, I will. But you have to ask me to do it. Everyone asked me to do this in the first place, and now they're mad at me because I've done my best to hold out till I had everything figured out in, and could present it to you as evidence. So we're trying to do that now, and I'm releasing it in chapters just so that you can see how hard we've been working for months. You've seen dozens of and dozens of photos just in this video alone that you've never seen before. Now you know where the party photo was taken. Now you know where the landscape is, what it looks like. You know where everything is now. And you also know for sure that Kylie Rodney didn't drive down into that lake by accident, whether she was drunk or sober. Now, before I take off here and enjoy my holiday and I hope you do too I hope you're all enjoying your holiday I worked really hard to get this done for Christmas for you I have worked night and day all through the Christmas holiday right up till today Christmas Eve and I'm not taking any breaks because I wanted to get this out for you guys all to have something for Christmas something new to watch something valuable insightful and educational and also entertaining. So I hope I satisfied all those things for you today. And I hope you will consider supporting us and donating to our crowdfunding so we can continue doing these videos for you. And chapter two and chapter three are already in the works. And we've discovered so many things that I wish I could tell you right now, but we have to hold out because we're still investigating. Also, Prosser Lake Campground and uh, 
Those areas have been closed for the winter because of snow, and that has really hampered our investigation. We can't go in there and do a lot of the things we were planning on doing, even for this video. So we had to leave a couple things out. So when the snow goes away and they open the, the uh, parks up again, we will continue doing some investigating in those areas. Right now they're buried in snow. As you can see, the campground gate is closed and you're not allowed to drive in there. And so we have had to hold off on a few things because of that, because of weather. Uh, campgrounds are closed right now. And of course we have the Christmas holiday right now. So everybody's busy, except for me and my team. We kept going the whole time. So I'm working right now, just trying to finish this video for you. I hope you all appreciated what I did for you today in this chapter. And before I go, I want to leave you with a little bit of a cliffhanger. There's one more thing I want to show you before I go. Do you remember this photo? This is a photo we were all told is Kylie's car in front of the lodge. But there's some things that people missed, and I'd like to point them out to you before I sign off. Now, we all know from the car facts and all these other pieces of data we've all found on the car that the car was purchased in June and registered July 1st. And uh, I will make the Canadian Carfax, since the car was built in Canada, I'll make the Canadian Carfax available in the download link in the description. You can have a copy because everybody that donated paid for that. It was $70 Canadian to purchase that. And everybody can have their copy if you'd like it. It's going to be in the download link in the description box. And in there, you'll see that the vehicle was purchased in June, registered in July. Now look at the photo here. Do you guys see a problem? Nobody's noticed, but I'm going to point it out to you. There's snow on the car and on the ground. But she only got the car in June and registered July. And she was already deceased in August. So there was no snow. So that made me look at this photo a little harder. In fact, I've looked at a lot of photos a little harder and found a lot of things that are very, very interesting. But since this photo was shown to us and we were told this was Kylie's car in front of the lodge, that doesn't make any sense because there's no chance of snow in July, right? So I started looking at it even closer and if you zoom in really close, really close, and start inspecting the photo, you're going to notice there is some crop work done here. And this vehicle was cropped and pasted onto this background. It was done rather professionally, except they missed a few spots that I found. I'm pointing them out to you right here. You can see along the snow edge here, where it meets the trees. There's been some scribbling done here, one or two pixels wide to fill in the little gaps where they didn't do a perfect crop job. They did a pretty good job, but you can see here that this photo is indeed fake. And I'd like you to think about that for a while while I sign off and get ready to put together chapter two, if I see enough public support, that is. Because we've investigated a lot of things once we found these anomalies, and I'm looking forward to sharing them all with you. But you're gonna have to wait until chapter two, and I will hopefully be able to bring that to you very soon if we see enough public support to continue our quest to get justice for Kylie Rodney.